Hello, everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of International Women's Day. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. I've been profiling the leaders in the technology world, women in technology, from developers to the boardroom, everything in between. We have two great guests remoting in from Malaysia. Nancy Wang is the general manager, also CUBE alumni from AWS Data Protection, and founder and board chair of Advancing Women in Tech, advancedawit.org. And of course, Kate Watts is the executive director of advancingwomenintech.org, so it's awit.org. Nancy, Kate, thanks for coming all the way across remotely from Malaysia. Of course, we're coming to you as fast as our uh, internet bandwidth will allow us. <laughs> and you know, I'm just thrilled today that you get to see a whole nother aspect of, of my life, mm -hmm. right? Because typically we talk about AWS and here we're talking about a topic near and dear to my heart. Well, Nancy, I love the fact that you're spending a lot of time um, taking the empowerment to go out and help the industries and helping the, with the advancement of women in tech. Kate, you're the executive director. It's a 501c3, it's a nonprofit dedicated to accelerating the careers of women in, in, in people groups in tech. Um, can you yes. talk about the organization? Yes, I can. So Advancing Women in Tech was founded in 2017 in order to fix some of the pathway problems that we're seeing on the rise to leadership in the industry. And so we specifically focus on supporting mid-level women in technical roles get into higher positions. We do that in a few different ways, through mentorship programs, through building technical skills, and by connecting people to a supportive community. So you have your peer network and then a vertical sort of relationships to help you navigate the next steps in your career. So to date, we've served about 40,000 um, individuals globally and we're just looking to expand our reach and impact and be able to better support women in the industry. Nancy, talk about the uh, creation, the origination story. How'd this all come together? Obviously the momentum, everyone in the industry has been focused on this for a long time. Where did AWIT come from? Advancing Women Technology, that's the acronym, advancingwomentechnology.org. Where did it come from? What's the origination story? Yeah, so AWIT really originated from this desire that I had to Kate's point around, well, if you look around, right, and you know, don't take my word for it, right? Look at stats, look at news reports, or just frankly go on your LinkedIn and see how many women in underrepresented groups are in senior technical leadership roles, right? Out in the companies whose names we all know. And so that was my case back in 2016. And so when I first got the idea, and back then I was actually at Google, which is another uh, large tech company in the Valley, right? It was about how do we get more role models? How we get more, for example, women into leadership roles so they can bring up the next generation, right? And so this is actually part of a longer speech that I'm about to give on Wednesday as part of the U.S. State Department speaker program. In fact, that's why Kate and I are here in Malaysia right now, is working with over 200 women entrepreneurs from all over in Southeast Asia, including Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, Borneo, you know, so many countries where having more women entrepreneurs can help raise the GDP, right? And that fits within our overall mission of getting more women into top leadership roles in tech. You know, I was talking with Teresa Carlson, she came on the program as well for this uh, year, uh, this next season we're going to do, and she mentioned the distinction between the U.S. progress and international, and she's saying as, as much as it's still bad numbers, it's worse than outside the United States and needs to get better. Can you comment on the global aspect? You brought that up. I think it's super important to highlight that it's just not one area, it's a global evolution. Absolutely. So let me start, and I'd love to actually have Kate talk about our current programs and all of the international groups that we're working with. So as Teresa aptly mentioned, there is so much work to be done, not just outside the U.S. and North America, where typically tech nonprofits will focus, but rather if you think about the one-to-end model, right? For example, when I was doing the product market fit workshop for the U.S. State Department, I had women dialing in from rice fields. Right. So let me just pause there for a moment. They were holding their cell phones up near uh, towers, near trees, just so that they can get a few minutes of time with me to do a workshop and how to accelerate their business. So if you don't call that the desire to propel oneself or accelerate oneself, I'm not sure what is. Right. And so it's really that passion that drove me to spend the next week and a half here working with local entrepreneurs, working with policymakers so we can take advantage and really leverage that passion that people have, right, to accelerate more business globally. And so that's why, you know, Kate will be leading our contingent with the United Nations Women 
group, right, that is focused on women's economic empowerment, because that's super important, right? One aspect can be, sure, getting more directors, you know, vice presidents into companies like Google and Amazon. But another is also, how do you encourage more women around the world to start businesses, right, to reach economic and freedom, independence, right, to overcome some of the maybe social barriers to becoming a leader in their own country? Yes. And if I think about our own programs and our model of being very intentional about supporting the learning development and skills of women and members of underrepresented groups, we focus very much on providing global access to a number of our programs. For instance, our product management um, certification on Coursera or engineering management, um, our upcoming Women Founders Accelerator. Um, we provide both access that you can get from anywhere and then also very intentional programming that connects people into the networks um, to be able to further their uh, their networks and what they've learned through through the skills online. So yeah, and something Kate just told me recently is these courses that Kate's mentioning, right? She was instrumental in working with the American Council on Education, and so that our learners can actually get up to six college credits for taking these courses on product management, engineering management, on cloud product management. And most recently, we had our first organic, uh, one of our very first organic testimonials was from a women's tech boot camp yeah. in Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about the worldwide impact of these upskilling courses, where frankly, in the US, we might take for granted, right, around the world, as I mentioned, there are women dialing in from rice paddies, from other, you know, for example, outside the, uh, you know, corporate buildings in order to access this content. You if you think about the idea of, oh, sorry, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead, no, go ahead, Kate. I was going to say, if you can't see it, you can't become it. And so we are very intentional about ensuring that we have we're spotlighting the expertise of women and we are broadcasting that everywhere so that um, so that anybody coming up can gain the skills and the networks to be able to succeed in this industry. We'll make sure we get those links so we can promote them. Obviously we feel the same way getting the word out. I think a couple of things I'd like to ask you guys because I think you hit a great point. One is the economic advantage. The numbers prove that diverse teams perform better, number one. That's, that's clear, so good point there. But I want to get your thoughts on the entrepreneurial equation. You mentioned founders and startups, and, and there's also different makeups in different countries. It's not like the big corporations. Sometimes it's smaller business in certain areas. The different cultures have different business sizes and business types. How do you guys see that factoring in outside the United States? I'll say the big tech companies, okay, yeah, they're, they're easy to lower the access to get, get in education and then stay with them. In other countries, is it the same or is it more diverse in terms of business? So what really actually got us started with the U.S. State Department was around our work with women founders. And I'd love for Kate to actually share her experience working with AWS startups in that capacity. But frankly, you know, we looked at the content and the mentor programs that were providing women who wanted to be executives, you know, quickly realized a lot of those same skills, such as finding customers, right, scaling your product and building channels can also apply to women founders, not just executives. And so early supporters of our efforts from firms such as Madrona up in Seattle, Emergence Ventures, uh, Decibel Ventures in you know, the Bay Area, and a few others that we're working with right now, right? They believed in the mission and really helped us scale out what is now our existing platform and offerings for women founders. Those are great firms, by the way, and they also are very founder friendly and also understand the global workforce. I mean, that's a whole nother dimension. Kate, what's your, what's your reaction to all that? Yes, we have been very intentional about taking the product expertise and the learnings of women and in our network. We first um, worked with AWS startups to support the development of the curriculum for the recent Accelerator for Women Founders that was held last spring. And so we're able to support 25 founders and also brought in um, the expertise of about 20 or 30 women from Advancing Women in Tech to be able to be the lead instructors and mentors for that. And so we have really realized that with this network and this individual sort of focus on product expertise, building strong teams, we can take that information and bring it to, to folks everywhere. And so there is very much the intentionality of allowing founders, allowing individuals to 
take the lessons and bring it to their individual circumstances and the cultures in which they are operating. But the product sense is a skill that we can support the development of and we're proud to do so. That's awesome. Nancy, I want to ask you uh, some, normally we talk about data storage and AWS cloud greatness and goodness. Here it's different. And you also work full-time at AWS and you're the founder and the uh, chairman of this uh, great organization. How do you balance both? And do you get it, they, they're getting behind you on this. Amazon getting behind, Ados getting behind you on this. Well, as I say, it's always easier to negotiate on the way in. Um, <laughs> but jokes aside, I have to say, the leadership has been tremendously supportive. If you think about, uh, for example, my leaders, Wayne Duso, who's also been on the show multiple times, uh, Bill Vass, who's also been on the show multiple times, you know, they're both founders and also operators, entrepreneurs at heart. So they understand that it is important, right? For all of us, it's really incumbent on all of us who are in positions to do so, to create a pathway for more people to be in leadership roles, for more people to be successful entrepreneurs. So no, I mean, if you just looked at LinkedIn, they're always upvoting my vote. So they reach to more audiences. Yeah. And frankly, they're rooting for us back home in the US while we're in Malaysia this week. That's awesome. And I think that's a good culture to have that empowerment. And I think that's very healthy. What's next for you guys? What's on the agenda? Take us through the activities. I know you got a ton of things happening. You got your event out there, which is why you're out there. There's a bunch of other activities. I think you guys call it the um, Advancing Women Tech Week. Yes, this week we are having a week of programming um, that you can check out at advancingwomenintech.org that is spotlighting the expertise of a number of women in our space. Um, so it is three days of programming, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday if you are in um, the US, so the 7th through the, through the 9th, but available globally. We are also going to be in New York next week for the event at the UN and are looking to continue to support our mentorship programs and also our work supporting women founders throughout the year. All right, I have to ask you guys, if you don't mind, get a little market data so you can share with mm -hmm. us here at theCUBE. What, what are you hearing this year that's different in the conversation space around the topics, the interests? Obviously, I've seen massive amounts of global acceleration around conversations, more video, things like this, more stories are scaling, a lot more LinkedIn activity. It just seems like it's a lot different this year. Can you guys share any kind of current trends you're seeing relative to the conversations and topics being discussed across the, the community? Well, I think from a needle moving perspective, right, I think due to the efforts of wonderful organizations, including the Q for spotlighting all of these uh, awesome women, right, trailblazing women, and the nonprofits, the government entities that we work with, there's definitely more emphasis on creating access and creating pathways. So that's probably one thing that you're seeing is more women, more investors posting about their activities. Number two, from a global trend perspective, right, the rise of women in security. I noticed that on your agenda today, you had Lena Smart, who's a good friend of mine, uh, Chief Information Security Officer at MongoDB. Right? She and I are actually quite involved in helping founders, especially early stage founders in the security space. And so globally, from a pure technical perspective, right, there's right, more increasing regulations around data privacy, data sovereignty, right? For example, India's in a few weeks about to get their first data pr uh, protection uh, regulation there uh, locally. So all of that is giving rise to yet another wave of opportunity. And we want women founders uniquely positioned to take advantage of that opportunity. I love it. Kate, reaction to that? I mean, founders, uh, more pathways. It mm -hmm. sounds like a neural network. It sounds like AI enabled. Yes, and speaking of AI, with the rise of that, we are also hearing from many community members the importance of continuing to build their skills, upskill, learn um, to be able to keep up with the latest trends. There's a lot of people wondering, what does this mean for my own career? And so they're turning to organizations like Advancing Women in Tech yeah. to find communities to both learn the latest information, but also build their networks um, so that they are able to move forward regardless of, of what the industry does. I love the work you guys are doing, it's so impressive. I think the economic angle is new, it's more amplified this year, it's always kind of been there uh, and continues to be. Um, what do you guys hope for uh, by next year this time? What do you hope to see different from a needle moving perspective to use your word, Nancy, for next year? What's the, what's the visual output in your mind? I want to see real effort made towards 50-50 representation in all tech leadership roles. And I'd like to see that happen by 2050. Kate, anything on your end? 
I love that. I'm going to go a little bit more touchy feely. I want everybody in our space to understand that the skills that they build and that the networks they have carry with them, regardless of where that they wherever they go. And so to be able to really lean in and learn and continue to develop the career that you want to have. So whether that be at a large organization or within um, within your own business, that you've got the the potential to move forward on that within you. Nancy Kate, thank you so much for your contribution. I'll give you the final word. Put a plug in for the organization. What are you guys looking for? Um, any kind of PSA you want to share with the folks watching? Absolutely. So if you're in a position to be a mentor, join as a mentor, right? Help elevate and accelerate the next generation of women leaders. If you're an investor, help us invest in more women started uh, companies, right? Women founded founded startups. And, for, and lastly, if you are look, women looking to accelerate your career, come join our community. We have resources, we have mentors, and we have investors who are willing to come in on the ground floor and help you accelerate your business. Great work. Thank you so much for participating in our International Women's Day 23 program. And we look to keep this going quarterly. We'll see you next year, next time. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thanks so much, Thank Sean. You. Okay, women leaders here for us. all over the world coming together for, for a great celebration, but really highlighting the accomplishments, the pathways, the investment, the mentoring, everything in between. This is theCUBE bringing in as much as we can. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. <laughs>